This video is a purely strategic analysis of poker. It teaches game theory. It does not promote real money play. I have something incredibly exciting for you guys in this video. These past two weeks, I watched four low stakes live plays on YouTube to try to better understand the psychology of regs. Something captured my interest and I followed it up with some statistical analysis into how regs play poker. And I definitively uncovered what I consider to be the biggest mistake in all of poker. In fact, it's so big that I've started calling it the fundamental error. In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you exactly what it is, where it happens, how to take advantage of it, and how to stop making it yourself. And all I ask in return is that you simply subscribe to the channel. Let's get right to it. Let's start by talking about those live plays. As a coach and former professional poker player, I've recently taken an interest into live play videos as a form of observational research. Studying tens of thousands of data points is one thing, but actually hearing how people think is entirely different. I want to focus on just one live play in particular, this one by Underestimated Poker, who by the way, is a fantastic player. Big shout out to them for putting their play out there. I watched the full hour of their 50 NL footage and took notes about how they played. I paid close attention to two things. Number one, how they were playing their strongest hands, like top pairs. And number two, how they were playing their medium strength hands, like second pairs. Based on thousands of hours of past playing and coaching experience, I expected to see that they would check too many medium strength hands and bet too many strong ones. I was right, but the extent to which I was right shocked me. Over the course of the hour, the creator got into 13 different spots where they had the choice to either bet or check with a strong hand. And 11 of those 13 times, they chose to bet. By contrast, they checked almost every single time they held a second or low pair. There were even a handful of spots where they decided to bet with what might look like a strong hand, but it was actually one that the solver would prefer to check. Clearly, this player has a tell. When they bet, they're likely to have a strong hand, and when they check, they're likely to have a medium strength one. I want to clearly state that this is a massive mistake. Let me show you why. Let's zoom in on just one hand. Hero is playing as hijack against big blind in a single raised pot. They're playing in position preflop, making them the in position preflop raiser, and big blind the out of position preflop caller. This terminology will come in handy later on. They flop a strong hand and decide to bet 66% pot. In isolation, this is not a problem. However, based on my analysis of the live play and some hardcore statistics, which we'll dive into later, I firmly believe that they would check if they were holding a medium strength hand like a second pair. Despite seeming like natural play, this is a big imbalance. Here's how the solver plays the spot, and here's likely how underestimated poker is playing. Almost certainly, they're betting their strong hands more often than the solver and checking too many of their medium strength hands, like under pairs and second pairs. The big problem with this is that it causes hijack's checking range to become extremely weak, and probably a lot weaker than you might think. Imagine you're playing as big blind, and hijack checks on the flop. The turn is now the three of diamonds, and you have the option to bet. In theory, you would have to play very cautiously here because hijack's checking range is balanced and fairly strong. They should hold a variety of hands like weaker top pairs, second pairs, etc. But because hijack is making this fundamental error of betting too many strong hands on the flop and mostly checking with their weak pairs, big blind no longer has to be careful. They're allowed to go on the attack because most of the time hijack will just hold a weak pair. Comparing the strategies side by side, this is how big blind should play on the three of diamonds if hijack checks a balanced range. And here's big blind's play given that hijack is making the fundamental error. Big blind's optimal strategy is to bet twice as often and the average bet size has now doubled. And the numbers are clear. Big blind's EV goes from 1.9 big blinds in the spot to 2.8. That's a 50% increase simply because hijack is making what seems like a very small mistake. But it gets even more extreme. If you've been following Savant for a while, you'll know that our approach never stops with just solver outputs. That's because there's another key piece of the puzzle that further increases the EV in favor of big blind. And that puzzle piece is the fact that as hijack, people will make additional mistakes on top of the mistake that they've already made on the flop. I'm gonna do something special for you guys. I'm going to reveal one of the most valuable snippets of coaching to you, one of the core concepts that you'll encounter in Savant courses. And that is the lesson that the spots in which people overfold the most compared to the solver are the same spots where they have weaker ranges compared to the solver. 
this is a consistent trend that you'll encounter when studying thousands of unique data points. Much of Savant's modern high-tech courses are built around trends like these, and I'll talk more about this later, but we're currently doing a limited time Black Friday sale where you can lock in at a low rate and keep it permanently. But back to the topic at hand. Because people have a weak flop checking range, data shows that they'll fold around 5% more often than the solver does against a turn bet. And if we tell the solver that hijack is going to overfold by this amount, here's how it thinks big blind should play. That's right, a pure range bet for the overbet size. This is quite literally about as aggressive as you could possibly get in poker. The fundamental error is no joke. It's something that is both ridiculously common and ridiculously exploitable. But we're not going to stop there. Knowing that this error is massive is one thing, but I also want to show you exactly where people make it. To do this, we're going to zoom out for a second. Looking at a case study like a live play is very helpful, but I want to show you this pattern represented in poker players at large. I used a combination of high-end statistical tools and robust custom sampling to analyze the range composition of the average reg in many different common poker spots. And just for you, I created an Excel spreadsheet that neatly summarizes my findings. Take a look here. Each quadrant represents a poker formation like SRP IPPFR or SRP OOP PFC. You might remember from earlier that in a hijack versus big blind single raise pot, hijack would be considered the SRP in position preflop raiser and big blind would be the out of position preflop caller. By contrast, SRP OOP PFR and SRP IPPFC refer to small blind versus big blind pots where small blind is the out of position preflop raiser and big blind is the in position preflop caller. The boxes in each quadrant represent different nodes. For example, here's the check bet node for big blind from earlier. This node took place when both players checked on the flop and big blind bet on the turn. And lastly, here's the exciting part, the actual data. In each box, there are two numbers. The one on the left represents how often players bet their strong hands relative to the solver. Positive values are in red and mean that regs bet too many of their top pairs and better. Negatives are in blue and mean that regs do not bet top pairs and better often enough in that spot. The number on the right does the same, but for second and low pairs. And to keep things visually tidy, the colors pink and purple are used for those hands instead. And now it's time for the big reveal. As you can see, in most common single raise nodes, regs will bet far too many strong hands relative to their second and third pairs. For example, if we look at in position's turn barrel node called bet bet, you'll see that they will bet their top pairs and better around 5% more often than the solver and bet their second and third pairs 8% less often than the solver. These numbers might seem small, but we've already seen just how big the impact gets. But there are a few even more helpful patterns and heuristics here that will help you better understand how your opponents play. First, notice that players will not bet enough strong hands on most rivers when they are in position. Likely, this is because players just don't bet thin enough in scary spots like very wet boards. Out of position, this isn't as common. That's because out of position should usually slow play some of their strongest hands on each street. Players will not slow play their strongest hands often enough, which is why these strong hands numbers are higher on the river. However, compared to in position, out of position should also bet much thinner with weak hands in most common spots. It's very common for out of position to have to bet many weak hands like second pairs in uncomfortable situations, and of course, most players will not do that. That's exactly why these numbers for weak pairs are more negative for out of position compared to in position. These patterns are very simple to remember and help you understand both theory and the mistakes that your opponents make. I suggest memorizing them. I also posted the same data, but for three bet pots in the premium section of our community discord for Savant members. The next big point I want to hone in on is the fact that this fundamental error is universal. According to database analyses of tens of millions of hands, this mistake persists across stakes and across environments. This means that you'll encounter it both in live and online games at low and high stakes alike. It truly is fundamental. And I think there's a very logical and interesting reason why. Coming from my career as a former pro and as a coach, the reason behind the fundamental error is twofold. The first explanation is simply boring human error. There are tons of tricky spots in poker where players have to make uncomfortable bets with marginal hands like second pairs, and most of the time they'll prefer to check. 
it's also simply very tempting to always bet with hands that feel strong. With the second, more interesting explanation, is that making the fundamental error actually lines up with the correct mathematical incentives for playing good poker. Place yourself in hijack's shoes in the spot from earlier. If you've been following Savant or have completed the SRP IPPFR course, you'll know that betting on the flop is the best way to get value. And by contrast, people tend to overfold in many different spots in general. They won't bluff catch with enough weak hands as they should, which makes it mathematically worse to value bet with mediocre hands. In addition, most players will not bet often enough in many different spots, which makes it a bit better to check hands like second and third pairs. Those hands just want to get the showdown as efficiently as possible, and if players don't bet enough, then it makes it easier to check and just get to showdown. The reason why I think this explanation is so crucial is because it definitively reinforces the idea that the fundamental error is truly universal. Betting strong hands and checking medium strength hands doesn't just feel like the right way to play. It actually is the right way to play in many cases. And that's exactly why this mistake is made both at the lowest and at the highest stakes. But this begs the final important question. Should you be making it? And unfortunately, the answer is not a simple yes or no. You should be playing this way in many cases, like when playing against fish. Fish will not punish you for making the error, so it's more than fine to just play every hand in isolation, not worrying about the downstream implications of an imbalanced checking range. However, the best regs at each stake will demolish you for making this error, because it's so predictable. At Savant courses, we teach people how to avoid making this error against those players, how to fight back, and how to demolish those who make it themselves. And according to the data, it works. Take a look at this client profile. Over a massive sample of almost half a million hands, we were able to increase their win rate by five big blinds per hundred. You can quite literally see the exact moment where they started using Savant. And as I mentioned, we're currently doing a very limited time Black Friday sale. I strongly encourage you to join for free, try a few of the courses out, and get it for even just a month. This will give you plenty of time to complete a lot of what's up there. You'll also get access to live coaching calls, previous edited recordings, and our private Discord community where I just posted that 3-bet pot data from earlier. Don't miss out. Follow the link below to get started for free. It could be the start of something very good.